Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my 100% walkthrough of Fallout 4. I hope you're all doing well. I know that I am. And today, we're going to do some side questing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Word is something bad went down in the old museum of witchcraft up near Salem. Why would anyone even go there? It's been abandoned forever. Darling, are you sure about this? I am not a normal girl. My dear, you're perfect. I only wish I had realized that sooner. Then by the power invested in me, I pronounce you man and wife. You helped me make a very big decision. Thank you. I think I know what this love is now. So to be able to trigger that, you have to make sure that you fast travel out of Diamond City somewhere. It doesn't really matter where, just anywhere, and then come back in and they'll be getting married. Let's go over to the dugout in. Oh, here we go. Quiet, you feet. All right, you. Tell me, Diamond City Radio is terrible, yes? Makes you want to cut your own ears off. Yeah, it's pretty bad. This is what I tell you, Finn. Something must be done. Radio is bad for business. Makes customers unhappy. Either we have unhappy customers listening to bad DJ, or we have no music and customers have boredom. Vadim! It's true! Don't listen to my brother. Someone needs to get rid of him. We need a new DJ for the radio. I don't think many would notice if he, you know, disappeared. That's a horrible idea. I tell you, it would be easier than you think. You just have to talk to... Uh, you just have to talk him into following you out of town. Honestly, right. Vadim, That's what enough. the hell has gotten into you? Vadim isn't serious. He doesn't really want to kill Travis. Okay, what's really going on here? <laughs> Sorry, we were just joking around a bit. <laughs> it's true. Only jokes. Travis is a good friend. Yefim and I worry about him. Well, Travis, he, he means well, but he does not have the confidence he needs for that job, or anything else, really. And so he's always awkward. He does not believe in himself, you see? He expects he will fail at everything, and so he does. Well... That can always be turned around. Exactly. This is what I'm telling you, Fim. Go on, spoil sport. Go back to working. We will figure out how to help Travis. Come, you. Meet me in back room. We discuss plan. Always on good behavior, aren't you? I try to be. Seems like you're doing better than trying. I appreciate it. Too few folks can be bothered. Of course, in my experience, if you want to do real good... Playing nice only gets you so far. I mean, look at Diamond City. A place I've been trying to warn of real danger. But every issue I publish, all I hear is, Oh, Piper, why don't you ever publish anything happy? Piper, why can't you write something nice for a change? It's enough to make me want to hang up my hat some days. Is Diamond City really in danger? It's not like there's raiders pounding on the gate. Are you kidding me? There is a very real chance the city leadership has been infiltrated by an institute synth. A synth under the control of an organization widely known to kidnap or murder anyone that stands up to them. I'd take raiders at the gate any day of the week over that. Of course, making sure folks are actually listening. <laughs> That's a battle in itself. Sounds like it must be exhausting. <laughs> no kidding. 
But people, they deserve to know the truth. Sure, it can be scary, knowing what's really out there. <laughs> A night doesn't go by, I'm not afraid. Some institute drone will decide today's the day to pay old Piper and family a visit. But it's worth it, because I know the truth. That's what protects us. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. How can you protect you and yours if you don't know what you're facing? Exactly. Most folks, though, they'd prefer a comforting lie. Not me. I've seen firsthand what the truth can do. My sister and I, we grew up way out in the Commonwealth. Tiny little settlement. Our dad, he was part of the local militia. <laughs> Keeping the raiders off our backs and the Mirelurks out of our latrines, as he'd describe it. Well, uh... One day, our dad turns up dead. His captain, asshole named Mayburn, claims raiders must have gotten him on watch. Well, I didn't buy it. I start making inquiries. Turns out, the captain, he'd sold out. Thought he wasn't getting paid enough to babysit the town. He was gonna leave the gates open one night. Let a group of raiders sack the place and take a cut of the profits. My dad found out and was gonna turn Mayburn in, but Mayburn got to him first. And I wasn't about to let that bastard get away with murder. I tried talking to the mayor, but he wouldn't listen. So, I papered the entire town in posters. Wanted for gross dereliction of duty, Captain Mayburn. The mayor sure wanted to talk after that. <laughs> the town threw Mayburn out on his ass and were dug in when a very surprised group of raiders finally showed. What happened after that? We made do. Sis was still pretty young at the time, and Mom was... out of the picture. So, we got by on the kindness of others for a while. Eventually, I saved up enough to book us both passage with a caravan, and then we moved on up to the big city. Called it home ever since. Piper, you saved those people. No. Those people saved themselves. Because they knew the truth. But hey, I, I'm sorry if I've been rambling. I just get fired up sometimes. It's just nice to talk to someone who, who actually seems to get it, you know? So, should we head out? Don't talk to me. Might attract someone's attention. What do you want, Vadim? I am glad you are willing to help. Unlike my deadbeat brother, Travis is a good guy. He deserves better life. So, what did you have in mind? I'm gonna need some more in the way of details. Ever been in bar fight? I can hold my own, if that's what you mean. This one's a pretty tough cookie. Exactly what I mean. I want you to back up Travis in his first fight. I want to stage fight here in dugout. Nothing too serious. Uh, we make sure Travis wins and feels good about himself after. I want you to be there to help make it look real. What do you think? Sound good to you? How would something like that even work? It makes sense, I promise. I have contacts, people I can count on. Real tough looking, but they will take a die for money. They confront Travis here at dugout. You step in and give him who she needs to stand up to them. Then you and Travis take them down. Nothing gets too rough. And Travis is something he can feel good about. Simple, right? Why involve me in this? You have seen Travis, yes? <laughs> he cannot fight alone. Not even fake one. He needs help. You can help him. I have everything ready by six o'clock. Travis should be here by then. You show up, and it will go well. Promise. Let's go listen to a hollow tape real fast. Wake up, Commonwealth. Since they're not your enemy, they are victims in this war as well. True, they were created by the Institute, but they were created as slaves. Thinking, feeling, and dreaming beings, utterly oppressed by their tyrannical masters. So join with us in fighting the real enemy, the Institute. Join the railroad. 
When you're ready for that next step, don't worry. We'll find you. <coughs> and then we're going to wait until 6 o'clock. Let's go into our pit boy for just a second here. We need to make sure that we don't have a weapon on when we go to fight these guys. Maybe I don't like your little radio program. What you have to say about that? You tell him. I'm just, I'm, I'm only here for a drink. Maybe I don't like your little radio program. Hey there, pal. Oh, it's What you, you have to say about that? Everything okay here? Does it look okay? Because, no, it is not. I don't, I have no idea what I did to deserve this. I just wish they'd go away. Why not stand up to them? No. I mean, no. That would be bad. With these men, it could, well, it, it, it could turn violent. Don't worry. I've got your back. Well, if you think it would work... We're right behind you. Oh, uh, um... Hi. There. Oh... Uh, Okay, that's... well, that's enough. Oh, I'm sorry. You say something. I said... I said that's enough. Leave me alone. <laughs> Look at you. Hmm, let me think about that for a second. Um, nah, I don't think so. I... I mean it. Leave me alone! Well, sounds like you were thinking about saying, or else. <laughs> were you, Travis? Were you gonna say, or else? I'm wondering what comes after that. What you gonna do, little man? I'll, I'll, I'll beat you up! Big mistake, Travis. I'm gonna destroy you and your friend here. Guess we showed them. <laughs> Guess so, Piper. Jeez, just gonna shoot up the place, huh? Travis. Oh, jeez. Vadim. What the hell is wrong with you? You were supposed to help Travis in fight, not murder people in my bar. Why would you think this is okay? It won't happen again. It can't happen again, because they were the only two guys I knew willing to do this. You have screwed this up big time. <sighs> I will try and fix the situation which you have made messing of. In meantime, I need you to not kill anyone and help with the rest of the plan. Okay? You have seen Scarlet, yes? She has worked here for some time. Now, I am just simple bartender, but I see things. I see how Travis looks at her, and I see that sometimes she looks at him. If someone who was not her employer suggests that she go spend time with Travis, it might do him some good. Why do I have to be involved in this? Think about it. I am Scarlet's boss. I tell her she needs to go see Travis. Suddenly she is thinking... <laughs> She is no longer just waitress. Apparently, I also need to say, please do not be killing anyone. Okay? This is for helping Travis, not murdering for fun. Just do whatever it takes to get her to agree to see Travis, and this will all be worth it. And you and I never talked about this, all right? 
I love how I'm getting blamed for murdering this dude when it was clearly Piper. Don't talk to me. Might attract someone's attention. You been to Good Neighbor? Friggin' hole. Ghouls and chemheads all over. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to put on the quest. You look a little roughed up. Should talk to Doc Crocker over at the Mega Surgery Center. Miss? I'm on a break right now. Can I ask you something personal? It's about Travis. Travis? Really? Did he... Did he mention me? Uh, I heard about the fight. Travis was... Well, he was brave. Yeah? Absolutely. You should really pay him a visit. You think? I mean, I've definitely noticed him. Maybe... No. No, I couldn't just go over there. What are you so nervous about? What's the worst that can happen? Believe me, I can think of some pretty horrible things. Look, I'm just not ready for that. Look, Travis is a nice guy. I can tell that you like him. And I think he likes you. Just go talk to him. Okay, I will. I'll go see him now. Thanks. Heard what you said about Diamond City. Glad to see the great green jewel still shines. We're gonna head back to the dugout inn. Broke up with my girl. She kept her cap off a toothpaste. Know who does that? A sin. This is terrible. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. He was up to no good, and look what's happened now. You've got to help. I can't do it. You've got to help me. Take it easy. It'll be all right. Just tell me what happened. They took him. They took Vadim. Men came in. They said they were friends of the ones you killed. It said Vadim owed them money because of what happened. He, he wouldn't pay. And then they grabbed him and said that they would make him pay. And then they just dragged him out. You have to do something. Please tell me you can do something. Do you know where they took him? No, I don't know. He's the one that uh, has always dealt with them. I've tried to avoid them. Travis might know. You should ask him, please. Hurry. I don't want anything to happen to Vadim. Let's go talk to Travis. Now a swatter has a real weapon. Talk to Mo Crow. We'll fix you up. Hey there. What's going on? Have you seen Vadim? He was grabbed at the dugout, and Yafim thought you might know where they took him. What? That's... That's not a funny joke. Like, at all. I'm not joking around, Travis. This is serious. I really do need your help. Wait. Really? Oh. Oh, man. Wow. Is this... This is because of what happened, isn't it? It's... It's my fault. No, Travis. This is between Vadim and those men. It's not your fault. But if I hadn't gotten into that fight with them, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Don't do that to yourself. All we can do now is figure out how to make this right. Look, I don't, I don't really... I mean... I don't have a lot of friends. If Vadim is missing, or in trouble, or whatever, then I'm gonna help get him back. All right. I'd welcome the help. Good. I didn't... I didn't want to have to argue about it with you. I've heard enough to know they're probably holed up at the old Beantown Brewery. We've got to go in there, show them we mean business, and, and then we can bring Vadim back, and everything will be okay. Right? I'll, I'll get a gun, and I'll meet you there. We'll settle this. I'm on a break right now.
We're going to also go ahead and put on Where's Diamond City Blues? There we go. We're gonna put the quest on Diamond City Blues. I'm too friggin' slow to join the Minutemen. Nice hat. I'll meet you there then. Don't be late. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. I just have to close up. You're Henry Cook, right? That's right. This is my place. Why? Is there some kind of problem? Are you sleeping with Paul Pembroke's wife? I really don't see what business it is of yours who I'm sleeping with. Paul asked me to talk to you, so here I am. Asking nicely. And I'm asking you, nicely, to turn back around and go tell Paul to come talk to me himself, if he's man enough. Think this through. Darcy isn't worth dying for. Or killing for. Think about what you're doing to poor Paul. You know what? You're right. This whole thing with Darcy and me. Bad idea. I admit it. Not like I planned it or anything. She was just always hanging around here. You know how it is. Look, tell Paul it's over. I swear. I won't even let her in my bar anymore. Is that good enough for you? It's a good start. Something more concrete would help. Yeah, okay. I get it. I have an idea. Something I've been thinking about for a while already. You know, kill two birds with one stone, you know? What's the idea? Here's the deal. I have some other, um, businesses on the side. One of them is helping Nelson Latimer spend his dad's money to make himself feel like a gangster. Who's Nelson Latimer? Malcolm's kid. An arrogant little pissant. But useful, since he has all the money in the world and likes to think of himself as a budding crime boss. Me and Nelson are supposed to be meeting some gentlemen from Good Neighbor to exchange Nelson's cash for their chems. My plan is simple. We take the money and the chems. Hold on. I have some questions first. Yeah? What is it? Why do you want to screw these guys over all of a sudden? Oh, it isn't all of a sudden. Nelson's been complaining about my cut for a while now. He may be thinking about trying to strike out on his own. I've been waiting for the right opportunity to present itself. And here it is. Anything else? What about afterwards? Won't everyone be after us? Come on. You know the answer. No witnesses. Anything else? Why smuggle chems into Diamond City? Chems aren't illegal here. Sure, but Mayor McDonough takes a big cut of all the chems brought into town. Not everybody thinks that's good business. That's where me and Nelson come in. He fronts the cash, I make the arrangements. Cheap chems for Diamond City. Everybody wins. Anything else? That's it. Okay. So you're in, then? I don't know. An awful lot of unknowns. Trust me, we can do this, no problem. The meeting's always in the same place. They always bring the same number of guys. They'll never know what hit them. I guess it's worth the risk. Let's do this. Now you're talking. I promise, you won't regret it. In a few hours, we're both going to be sitting pretty. <sighs> Beer and my slippers after this shift. That's all I ask.
Nelson's starting to think he doesn't. We should need get inside me. the city. We're late, but I'm sure Trish won't hand over the chems until I get there. You see, I'm the one she trusts. Luckily, he's not nearly as smart as he thinks he is. Here we are. The meat is just ahead. Well, there's always four of Morowski's goons. Trish, who's in charge, and then three other guys to unload the boat and wave their guns around. You should be able to work your way around these buildings to get a good angle on them. I'll wait for the shooting to start, then join in from here. Remember, we can't afford to let anybody get away. You still thinking about it? What about Nelson? I'll deal with Nelson. You worry about Morowski's crew. Now, are we all set? Sounds good. We're gonna turn off our Pip-Boy lamp in just a second here. And that's how it's done. Don't move. Uh, you don't have to kill me. I won't talk. I swear. How can I be sure you won't send anyone after me? You're not actually thinking about leaving her alive. I'll tell Morosky it was Gunners, okay? You can trust me. And uh, uh, I'll give up Morosky's chem lab. This here? <laughs> this is nothing compared to what he's got stashed there. What's at this chem lab? More chems than you can imagine. Morowski's entire stash. But you'll never find it without my help. Tell me what you know first. Well, okay. I'm trusting you, right? The lab is in the old Forley fish packing plant on the waterfront in South Boston. What's so secure about that? The place is overrun with feral ghouls, which don't even look twice at my crew, because they're all ghouls like me. My idea, by the way. Why wouldn't the feral ghouls bother you and your crew? What? You don't know? Ferals don't bother us normal ghouls. I don't know why. Maybe we taste bad or something. But they're just for cover anyway. The real security is a system of tripwires that have to be triggered in exactly the right order to open the door to the lab. You never even know the lab was there when the door is closed. So how do I get in without hitting all the tripwires? With a password, which I can give you. There's a terminal that will bypass the tripwires and open the door to the lab. So I have your promise, right? If I give you the password, you let me walk? And you promised to not tell Morowski that I had anything to do with this? Yeah, yeah, of course. I already told you. After I leave here, I've never heard of you in my life. The password is Applejack. There, now you've got everything. And I'm completely screwed forever. I hope you can live with that. Sorry, Trish. I'll let them fight it out. Oh! She's pretty squishy anyways. Cook can handle her. Maybe. Oh! <laughs> 
Either way, it's a win-win situation. Free for the taking. You're not walking away from this one. Get dead, cook! Well, while they're doing that, I'm gonna loot. And you guys are slow. You're not going to win this. I think I think Trish is going to win. Ah, God. Oh. So that's that. <sighs> I told you it was no problem. The money should still be on Nelson's body. And then there's these chems, which you'll need to sell somehow. But that's your problem now. I'm leaving town, for good. Should make things easier for Paul to have me gone. Plus, there's no plausible way I could explain to Morawski how I wasn't involved in this unless I die here along with everyone else. What are you going to do now? Uh, I think I'll just keep that to myself. But don't worry. I've been planning this move for a while. I'll be fine. Ton of Kims. We can make a lot of money here. All right, we're going to head west. That's the wreck of the USS Riptide. We're going underneath the bridge we crossed over to get to Diamond City. And normally, as we're getting up here, we're going to find that there's some raiders and some scavengers. It's not a guarantee, but it's very likely. I don't like that every scavenger is hostile to you, at least for the most part. It just doesn't make sense to me. Because you'd think like some scavengers wouldn't want to hurt you, they're just scavenging. But instead, they always got to be hostile towards us. Yeah, Mr. Gutsy. Hey. Something's out there. Here's trouble. Oh, he went around that way. Like still here. Let's use some rat away and then a stim pack. Up there is Volt 81. We don't have to sneak anymore either. Shouldn't be any more enemies at the moment. We're going to make a pit stop over here. Poor trader. All they were trying to do is sell some vegetables and fruits. That's it. Grab some day tripper and some fertilizer. Some bobby pins. Scoop that stuff up. And some carrots. Okay, we're gonna come out over here. And then right over here by this wrecked car, if we look off to the north, we can see a bunch of stuff on fire. That's where that UFO crashed. I was talking about that in a couple of episodes ago.
I'm going to head over to the UFO. It's really hard to actually see the UFO crash. You can usually see the shadow of it, but actually seeing it is a little tough. Right here we can see some green blood. There's a trail leading up here of blood. It's going to lead down here to a cave. We're going to crouch and go inside. Kill the Zetan or Zetan. I don't know if it's Zetan or Zetan. Grab the alien blaster pistol. Loot what you want. Then we'll exit. We're going to head west over here to Oberlin Station, Uberlin Station. Some of the names are kind of hard to pronounce. I think it's Uberland Station. You can turn that into a workshop if you want. I'm not going to bother. We're going to head north down the railroad tracks here. Beantown Brewery is right there. That's where we're heading. We're going to go help Vadim. We're going to circle around here, go to the front, and meet up with Travis. We almost got a level, too. I think I'm going to put it into gun nut. Oh, thank God. You're here. So this is it. Odds are if they've got Vadim, he's inside. We're... We're going to be okay, right? Definitely. We'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Good. I mean, I can do this. Totally. That's a good attitude. Because in a minute, you're going to have to. Any, uh, any last minute advice? I've never done anything like this. I go in first, and you stay behind me. Watch my back. Okay. Whatever you say. Let's go inside the Beantown Brewery. It's really good. You can bowl in here if Travis doesn't get in the way. And I suck. Oh well. We're gonna come into this room. There's gonna be a raider that's sleeping. Take him out. They're blowing themselves what? up. A bunch of junk. Also, right here, if you want to go in that terminal, you can read a little bit of lore on this place. I really don't care about any of that. Shit's got ambush all over it. Oh! Oh! Ah! Found your sorry ass. You feel that? It's coming. Now we can get to. We are messing them up. Once we get through this, we'll put a level in. Hey. <coughs> Damn. Lost them. Pop your head out again, bud. Oh, Piper, come on, man. You picked on the wrong people today. Oh, damn, I didn't know that I killed Bolt. I thought he was still alive. Come to that.
I'm gonna grab those. Let's go ahead and pick up a picket fence magazine. Bingo. This is going to allow us to build picket fences at our settlement. We can pick up this hollow tape. This is actually a Gwinnett brew recipe. We can use this later on into the walkthrough. And we will lockpick this real quick. Nice. And then we're going to hack this terminal and then we'll help Vadim out. Let's talk to Vadim. If Travis will get out of the way. Hi. Thank you. I didn't know if anyone would come. I thought perhaps this is the end. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You are true friend. You're welcome, Vadim. We weren't going to leave you to these guys. You are a good man. <laughs> these idiots. Had caps and cams just lying around. <laughs> they, they did not notice when I filled my pockets. You deserve what I took. Ah, and Travis, I am surprised to see you here. <laughs> hey, Vadim, I'm glad you're safe. How did you get roped into this? I, I wasn't forced or anything. I wanted to help. <laughs> you are full of surprises, my friend. <clears throat> Man, what a day, huh? Hey, listen. I wanted to say thanks. This has been... Well, it's been crazy. But I've learned a lot, I think. You came through it all pretty well, Travis. That's good to hear. Thanks. Pretty well? I barely recognize you, Travis. After all this, I think about the things that had me worried so much, and it just seems... Silly, you know? Like, was I really that worried about just being on the radio? That's nothing compared to being beaten up, shot at. I can do so much more. And I need to. Anyway, thanks again. I owe you. And that concludes The Confidence Man. gonna come over here real quick got a couple of raiders that are in here these raiders must be super dumb that they didn't hear all the fighting going on I can carry something if you need me to and then we'll go and lockpick this door sweet Should be a rad roach or two over here. Yep, <coughs> right here. And then one more, right? Usually there's another rad roach, but that's all right. Doesn't matter. I guess this place doesn't get a whole heck of a lot of foot traffic. We'll hop down here and then we'll exit out of the Bean Town Brewery. Alrighty, everyone. This is where we're going to end the video. I want to start by telling everybody thank you so very much for stopping by and watching the video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button and let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night. Whatever time it may be in your part of the world, Mr. John Wayne, signing off.